Welcome back to Just Scribble. Today we are going to do a setup of my work planner. So this is my work planner. I currently have it in this Kukuyo Systemic cover. I don't know if I'm gonna leave it in this cover or not. I haven't fully decided, but that's where it is right now. So this is my work planner for 2024, but this is the Franklin A5 Daily Organizer, and that's what I'm using as my work planner. And then this is a booklet from Sterling Inc. It is a monthly booklet in A5 size. This is my project planner for work. And so we are actually going to be setting both of these up for 2024. The setup for both of these planners is really pretty simple, but we are going to do this setup video a little bit different because even though it is simple, it does take quite a bit of time. So I'm gonna to talk to you guys first about what I'm gonna do for each of these to set them up. Then I'm going to go and do it off camera, and then I'm gonna come back and do a full flip through with you so that you guys can see the full setup. So let me start with the tabs. So I do have a few tab options for these planners. So these tabs are from the Color Cafe and they have this holographic like fractured mirror overlay on them. And these are in the color slate. So I'm going to be using these and then I'm also going to be using these tabs from Lexi Kylie. So I have this set that's on a matte paper sticker and then this set that's on a matte transparent sticker. So I'm gonna do the same tab setup in this A5 organizer that I did for 2023 in my Sterling Ink Common Planner and that is that the transparent tabs are gonna go on the monthlies. So the monthlies in this planner are all at the front. And so the transparent tabs are going to be for the monthlies. And then the non-transparent set is gonna to be to mark the different months in the dailies. So you can kind of see where there's the thumb tabs on here. So that's what these are going to be used for. And then this set with the holographic overlay is going to be used for the monthly booklet that's my project planner. So these are gonna go on this one and these two are gonna go on this one. Like I said, I am gonna put these on off camera and then I'm gonna come back and show them to you. But I did want to share with you which tabs I was using and on which one. And then I also wanted to just explain that when I apply tabs, I always apply them from the back forward to the front of the book. It helps you line them up and ensure that your spacing is straight and then also that they are straight as far as how far they stick out on the side. So it's a lot easier if you start from the back of your book and then work your way forward to make sure that they're all lined up. So that's how I will be applying these tabs. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few stickers to the front of this planner, probably on this gray sort of cardstock thicker piece of paper. I'm gonna add these quote stickers. This one says, don't let yesterday take up too much of today. This one says, don't overthink it. This one has this adorable turtle with a cup of coffee and a grumpy face. And this one says, what's the best that could happen? So I'm gonna put all of these over here and then I may lay a piece of overlay over that like I did in my wellness planner. I do have a video up on that setup, but I have overlay sheets in a few different patterns. And so I may put some overlay over those stickers after I lay them down just for a little bit of sparkle. It also adds a little bit of structure to this page. And then the only other real setup in these planners is on the monthlies. So I do pre-decorate in all of my planners the monthly spreads for the entire year. That way they are already decorated, they are already ready to go. I already know what colors of highlighters or Tombows or dot markers match so that when anything gets scheduled or planned, I can go ahead and write it down and I can color code it if I want. So I don't have to worry about having any sort of special pre-planning or future planning log. I just write everything down directly into the monthly when it gets scheduled. So I do decorate all of my pages. So I will be doing that off camera. And I will come back and we'll do a flip through of how they're decorated, but I will be using for the A5 organizer live love posh stickers to do all of that decor. I have a bunch of her sticker books, including her different color bloom sticker books. So she had these in like a rainbow of colors. So there's like a green one, a red one, a blue one, a yellow one. I have all of them. And these are full of beautiful transparent floral stickers and then matching functional stickers that work beautifully in monthly spreads. And this is what I used last year, along with some of her seasonal sticker books to match seasons for certain months. And so I will be going through all of my Live Love Posh sticker books and figuring out 
which sticker I want to use for that month based on kind of the season or the vibe for that month. And I will lay down transparent stickers to decorate the month. I don't do a whole lot of decoration on my monthly spreads. Mostly I just decorate where there's no actual days. So like here on January, this little section right here is probably where the decor would be in February down here and maybe a little something up here. So I kind of fill in those days that aren't being used because this planner also has a place over here for your goals and tasks. I'm okay with using the space for a little bit of decor because it makes me happy and it inspires me to use my planner. The only other thing that we may do in this planner, and I'll probably wait and do it with you guys, is we may set up the first week of January, just so you guys can see how I plan on setting up and decorating my weekly spreads. Well, it's actually like a weekly overview and then daily pages. I don't plan on doing a whole lot of decor in these, just a little bit of washi or a little bit of highlighter or Tombow, but I wanted to set up a week with you guys just to kind of show you guys how it would be set up. So that's gonna be the setup for the organizer. It'll be pretty straightforward. It's a very functional planner, but I do like a little bit of color in my life, so I will be doing that. And then for the project planner, I am going to put a little bit of decor down on these monthlies as well. I don't think I'm gonna use stickers for these. I'm probably going to use washi and just do washi on these monthly spreads. I haven't decided 100%, but that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. So this won't have a whole lot to it, mostly just tabs and then I think some washi on the pages. But that is how I'm gonna set up my work planner and my project planner so that they are ready for 2024. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera. And then when I come back, we will do full flip throughs of both. We'll talk about how I'm using them and you can check out how I have them set up. All right, I am back and I have my project planner and my work planner all set up. Well, mostly set up. There's a couple of things that I still have to do and we will talk about those, but I wanted to share the setup with you guys. In the intro, I did share that I had my work planner in this systemic cover from Kukuyo. I don't know 100% if I'm gonna use this cover for 2024 or if this is gonna be the cover that I at least start out in 2024. I haven't really decided, but I have some other A5 covers, so I will decide what cover I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna move the cover aside and we will start with the project planner because that one is a little bit more straightforward. And I thought I would share with you guys what I did to set it up and talk to you a little bit about how I plan to use this. So the setup for my project planner is really pretty straightforward because this is just a project planner. It's gonna be a very functional piece of my 2024 lineup, but I did need to add tabs to it. And then I wanted to put just a little bit of decor in it just because it inspires me to use my planners when they are pretty. So I did add tabs to this planner. This is a monthly planner from Sterling Inc. And so I did add my monthly tabs. These are from the Color Cafe and I'm not sure if the light is picking it up, but they do have this like holographic crackle on them. And so they have this laminated overlay on them, which makes them really, really nice to lay down and also sturdier than normal vinyl sticker tabs. I Love these tabs. This was the only set of tabs that I had from the Color Cafe and I decided to use them on this planner. I am definitely going to be going and ordering a few more of these tabs from her shop because I absolutely love them. They do have a little color on them. I had picked the slate colorway, so it has this sort of gray little swash right there, but there were other color options as well. And then they have that holographic overlay on them. And I think they look really nice. I actually just kind of eyeballed the placement of these tabs. I always put tabs on from December and work my way back up to January. It's easier to make sure that you lay your tabs straight and that the placement is fairly good. They're not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. And I think it looks really nice. And I like the low profile. So the first thing I did to set up my project planner was to add those tabs. I already had some page flags here. This is for color coding that I'm going to use in my project planner based on country because, because I do work for a multinational company and I work on various jurisdictions. I wanted to have a color coding system for my project planner. So these page flags, which actually came from Amazon, they are the base for my color coding for my project planner. And then I did add this little sticker here, it's a mono line art floral sticker with this taupe decor on it. It's very neutral. I decided that because I was using a color coding system in this planner and there may be a lot of coloring and there may be a lot of color with pen and highlighter as I use this project planner, that any decor I had in this planner should be very neutral. So I added this sticker here. and it's from a Live Love Posh sticker book. I did nothing to the 2024 opening page. I don't know if I'll end up doing anything on this annual overview calendar. I did actually think about using it to mark bank holidays because I do have all of the bank holidays in a schedule, but I think it might be too cluttered there. So I may actually just tip in the bank holiday schedule that I have here that's by jurisdiction and then leave this blank. 
and then the next two pages are just blank grid pages so I have left these blank I am actually going to be tipping in a project timeline from a service provider on this side we get a timeline by jurisdiction that relates to the project that this project planner covers and so once we receive that for 2024 which should be um, in the next week or two I'm going to paste that down here or tip it in here and then I'm gonna leave this side blank in case something else comes up that I need to tip in as well similar to that timeline that they send the next page is a goal breakdown I actually don't know how I'm going to use this in my project planner or even if I'm going to use this in my project planner only because this planner is specific to a specific project and this sort of goal setting system doesn't really work for it but I did think about using this to maybe document the steps related to this project so I left it blank until I figure out if that's what I want to do and how I want to do it. And then you go into the quarterly overview pages. So I'm gonna be using these just to keep track of key dates for each jurisdiction. Large filings that are due related to the project will go up here. Key dates for different filings are going to go here. And then notes to myself on things that I need to work on each month, like my top priorities for the project for each month are gonna go down here. This side over here will probably be an extension of this once I get into it, I'll have a better idea of how I'm going to use this, but that's how I plan to use these quarterly pages. I did decorate each quarterly page with a sticker that coordinates with the sticker that's on the front. And so each quarter has a different sticker, all from the same sticker book from that same sticker collection, because I thought that they looked really nice. It adds a little bit of something to the page, but it doesn't take up very much space. And I think it looks really, really nice. And then after that, you go into the monthly. That is what this is, a monthly planner. So it's just monthlies, there's no dailies, there's no weeklies. And on each monthly, I just added one black line art floral sticker to each month. The stickers are a combination of Happy Planner stickers and Live Love Posh stickers. So I just kind of picked one that I liked for the month or that fit into the space where I wanted to put it. And I put one on each month towards the end of the month. I've not filled out or put anything in this planner yet because I wanted to do that after I filmed the setup just because I can't share everything that's going in it. But everything will be color coded with the color coding key that I have here. And it will be filling it out with deadlines, check-in points, tasks for the month, things like that related to this huge project that I work on all year long that relates to each of those jurisdictions. So this is December of 2023. We are actually wrapping up the 2023 project and have kicked off the 2024 project. So I will go and back, fill out this with the activities that we did for December and some notes to myself. That way I have it to refer to when I get closer to the end of 2024, but each month kind of looks the same. And then the only color that will be on there relates to the color coding that I'm using for each jurisdiction. So each month is just marked with a tab and then has a floral line art. I do have a few sticky notes to myself for some places that I want to make sure I write some stuff down. But other than that, I just laid down the stickers and the tabs. And it does have January 2025, so I will be filling that out as well, just so that I have it ready. When I move into the 2025 planner, I can copy that information over and it will already be ready. And then in the back, it has a few, uh, let's see, 19 grid pages, 20 if you count this one over here. This is just going to be for reference. So I'll have a list of our service providers and their contacts. I'll have information about our statements of work, about, about fees and billing, things like that, that all relate to this project. That is my project planner. It's a really simple setup, but I love the tabs. I love the addition of the little floral stickers just to have a little something on the page and I'm really excited to use this for 2024. So that is my project planner and then this is my work planner for 2024. So I said these weren't fully set up. One of the reasons is because I have to actually you know fill this out. One of the reasons is because I did order another adhesive vinyl wrap from Planner Press to put on this planner. So it, this does have a jelly cover on it right now. This jelly cover is from Cat Espresso Co. And I really love this jelly cover, but underneath the actual planner itself is just like a white card stock. It just says Franklin Planner Organizer 2024.1. I wanted to cover this and at first I was just gonna put a piece of paper, but then I was on Planner Press's website and saw that they launched some more designs for their vinyl wraps. And I do have a video sharing those. And they launched one that is just a white with black grid on it. And I think it would look really nice on my work planner. And then I could stick a die cut or a journaling card inside my clear cover and change it up each month if I wanted to or change it up for the seasons but the actual like vinyl cover that would be stuck on it would be really really neutral so when that vinyl wrap comes I will be adding it to my work cover and I think it'll look really nice
nice and sleek. So I am going to be doing that. If you guys want to, I can put that on on a video, like I can unbox the order with you guys, and then we can actually apply it on a video if you guys want to see it. I did cut out, or actually tore off, the page marking ribbons. I left them here so I could show you guys. So off camera, I did take these off. I'm not a fan of these in any planner or planner cover, so I always take them off. So I did take that off, and then I did set up the planner on the inside. So let me open this up. I kept these so I could show you guys. So on the inside cover, I did keep it kind of simple, but I wanted to put a little something down that just made me happy. And I really love this grumpy turtle sticker with the coffee that I got. And then I love the sticker that says, don't overthink it. So I put those there and I put an adhesive pocket here. This adhesive pocket, This adhesive pocket can be used to hold sticky notes. So I can put a pack of sticky notes in here. I could put a planner card in there. I could put business cards in there, whatever it is that I want. I also have pockets over here that I can stick decor or business cards or scratch paper or whatever I want in. But right now I just stuck a little planner card from Planner Press that just says, don't take criticism from people you wouldn't take advice from, because I love this card. And then I use some letters from the Happy Planner and I just put my word of the year achieve here. It's not perfect. And the colors that were on the sticker sheet that I had, they matched this, but I didn't get to use very many of the different color variations. Okay. Most of the letters in my word of the year were in kind of the same color section. And it was kind of a gradient rainbow sticker sheet. So the V is the only one that's like a different color, but I think it looks good. And it's really just for me to see my word of the year when I open my page. So after that, you just have this page here that doesn't do anything. I waited to do this with you guys, but I am actually just going to stick this down. I don't have any need for this page. And it has like a lot of print on it. And I just don't want to see it. So I'm just going to fold this over like that. And now that page is stuck down and I don't have to worry about it. So here I do have the 2024 and 2025 calendar. I really don't have any use for this calendar in this planner. But right now I have it here and I didn't put anything to cover this up, which is kind of a little bit of an eyesore, but ultimately I will probably paper clip it so that I'll just go straight into the month that I'm in. So I probably won't see this very much. I do have a paper clip here because I did already start December, which I'll show you guys in a second. But before that, I wanted to show you my tabs. So this planner is not bundled. So all of your months are at the front and then all of your days are at the back. So I use two sets of tabs from Lexi Kylie Designs. I use these tabs in my planner for 2023 and I've really liked them. So I used her transparent ones on the monthlies and then I used her solid ones on the dailies. And I use the thumb tab marking on the dailies as my guide for placing the tabs on the daily pages. And once again, I started in the back so I started with December and I laid that one down and then I went to November and I just put it above the thumb tab and then I went all the way through to January and that's how I laid the tabs. And then for the monthly tabs, I really just eyeballed it. I started at the bottom for December and then I just kind of spaced them as equally as I could so that the monthlies start down here and work their way up and then the dailies start up here and work their way down, if that makes sense. So that's how I set the tabs up, I really like them. So the next thing I did to set up my planner is I already pre-decorated all of my monthly spreads in this planner. So when I start a planner, or really before I start a planner, I pre-decorate all of my monthly spreads for the year in that planner. And I do that so that as things get scheduled throughout the year, I'm not hesitant to write in my monthly spread. I see a lot of people in the planner community that don't start using their monthly spread until right before that month starts. And so they don't have any of their events or appointments or holidays or anything put into their monthly spread ahead of time. And so they keep it somewhere else or on a scrap piece of paper, or what they call a pre-planning planner or something like that. And then they transfer them in at the beginning of the month when they set up their monthly spreads. To me, that's a lot of extra work and it's just way easier to just go ahead and put it in your monthly spread. But I do like to have decor in my monthly spreads and I do like to coordinate the color that I use in like a highlighter or a marker when I'm putting important things into the monthly spreads to the decor of that monthly. So I go ahead and set them up ahead of time and that way they're already ready and when anything gets scheduled, I can just go ahead and add them to my monthlies. So I have already pre-decorated all my monthlies and I'm gonna flip through that with you guys and talk to you about how I did it. But the first one I did was December so that I could sort of back plan into it and just 
fill it up because the spread was here. Rather than gluing it down and just skipping it, I decided I would go ahead and fill it out. So it is duplicative of what's in my Sterling Ink A5 Common Planner that I'm using for work this year. But because this is a new monthly spread and like the sidebars over here instead of over here and everything's a little bit different and it has lines instead of grid and all of that, I kind of just wanted to get a feel for it. One thing that I did in my Common Planner last year is that when I was on vacation, I boxed around the days that I was on vacation. As you can see in December, I'm on vacation a lot because I didn't use vacation during 2023. But that's how I kind of marked that it was a vacation day. I found in this planner, I don't like that. I don't like how that looks with the lines and the fact that they have like these gaps between each day. And so I went to do, so when I went to do it, I kind of had to make thick lines on this side. And I don't know, I just, I don't know, I just didn't like how it looked. So I learned from doing this back planning in December that I'm gonna change up how I mark vacation days in my work planner going forward. So I kind of used it as a test to figure out how I was gonna do it. And then I'm just gonna keep it clipped because I don't really need to actually see December anymore because it's in my other planner and it doesn't have to do with 2024, but I wanted to kind of show it to you guys. But this is my January spread and the setup for every monthly I did the same thing. So I thought I would talk to you guys about what I did. So the first thing that I did was I picked a sticker. So all of the stickers in these monthly spreads that I'm gonna show you, they are from Live Love Posh and they are all on transparent sticker paper. Depending on when the month ended and how it ended depended on where I kind of placed that sticker. But generally I placed it kind of in this spot right here. And because I don't generally work Saturdays and Sundays, I was okay if it went a little bit into the Saturdays and Sundays, but, but I, I tried not to block anything that was in a Monday through Friday for that month. Then based on the sticker, I picked a marker, actually a calligraph from Archer and Olive. And I used a straight edge and I drew a line here to differentiate the work week from the weekend. I started doing that when I was using the Take a Note Planner for my work planner because they have a different shading, like a brown shading on their Saturday and Sunday. And so I used a matching brown color and on every single month I just drew a line and it really helped me visually see the work week from the weekend. So when I set up my Sterling Ink Common Planner for 2023, I did the same thing. I drew a line. I actually highlighted the Saturday and Sunday the same way that they were kind of highlighted in the take a note. And then I drew a brown line. This In this planner, I decided to do it color coordinated. So I picked a color that was like the main color from the sticker and I drew a line down there so I could separate Saturday and Sunday. And then I used that same marker to color over these headers that are right here just so that they would have color that kind of matched the rest of the spread. And then for any days where there were holidays, I put a holiday sticker down, as you can see there. Those are from this Mandolin Plans Holidays Weeks slash A6. I don't know when I bought this, so I don't know if this is like a current style of holiday sticker or not, but I really liked them for my work planner because they were so small and they fit perfectly on the line next to the date and they were a really simple script, so they didn't take away from my weekly spread, but I could still see if there was a holiday. The other thing that I did was I actually whited out on every single day. I don't know if you can actually see the white out because it's actually hard to see in person, but maybe in the lights you can see it. But I whited out the but I whited out the Japanese writing that was next to the number. So it had a 16 and then it had the 16 in Japanese writing, 23 in the Japanese writing. And it was just kind of a lot on the page and I thought it looked a lot cleaner without that. So throughout all of the months, I whited out those Japanese dates. And then if they had the holiday, it was in red. And so like this had a holiday here, I whited it out as well. January is year end close. And so I do have our work days marked there just because I need that for work. This is our wedding anniversary. So I marked that just because it's our wedding anniversary. And then I put a little sticker here and a 2024 and then a holiday sticker because the first is a holiday for us for work and then I kept the rest of the holiday stickers there from randy.plans and when I'm in the office I'm going to pull our holiday list for 2024 because I don't have my because I didn't have my calendar with me and I'm going to pull that holiday list and I'm going to put the rest of the holiday stickers into this planner so one thing I have to do is put that vinyl wrap on the front. Another thing I have to do is put down all the holiday stickers. And then the other thing I have to do is fill this out because we already have things scheduled throughout the year. So I need to go in and put actual events down. But this is what January looks like. I did put a little tab so I could easily flip to January. And then I did put a tab to easily flip to the first week of January just so that it's easy for me to get to them. These are repositionable. They're from Amazon. They are in my Amazon storefront. I love these tabs. I just got them and I really, really like them. They are very, very thin. They don't have a whole lot of adhesive, but they stick well and they're, repos they're repositionable and you can write on them. So I really like these. So I added those to the bottom, but that's January. And you're going to see every month 
basically looks the same, just the sticker is different because they picked a sticker that kind of went with the theme of that month or the season of that month or the holiday of that month. So obviously February is the month of Valentine's Day. I do have my Valentine's Day sticker there, President's Day sticker there. I white it out, as you can kind of see there, I white it out the holidays and the Japanese dates. I picked some stickers that felt Valentine's appropriate to me and then a marker to draw the line and a marker to highlight those task and goal sections over there just so that they would kind of pop and stand out from the rest of the monthly. So I'm just going to flip through each month so you can check it out. So we have February, then we have March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. And there's no um, January 2025, so that's where we stop. And I did mark some key dates where I'm gonna be writing some words. I did already kind of highlight on them so I could show you guys how I use highlighter that coordinates with the spread to mark important things so that they kind of jump out at me on my monthly. I do use my monthly very functionally, but I do believe that you can be decorative or have color on your page and still be a very functional planner. So I know there's a lot of people that talk about, oh, I'm a functional planner, not a decorative planner. And it seems like they're kind of judging people that are decorative planners. I don't think that there's anything wrong with being either. You can be a functional planner that has absolutely no decor, super minimal, just pen and marker or just pen. Or you can be a decorative planner and you can be very, very functional as well. Just because there are stickers and color in my planner does not mean that it's not functional. It is super functional for me, but it also is inspiring to me and it makes me happy. And I like being able to see just like the different vibe of each month that kind of coordinates with the season or the holiday. So those are my monthly spreads. And then the next page you have is future planning. So this is where I will mark things that pop up for 2025 during 2024. And I know fill them out here and then I can use that when I set up my 2025 planner. After your future planning, you go into the daily pages. So the way that these daily pages are set up is on the left hand page at the beginning of the week, you have this weekly compass page. And on the right hand page, you have Monday and then it goes Monday through Sunday. So let me pick one that I haven't done anything on yet so that you guys can see it. So you have your weekly compass. So this is like your overview page. It has your tasks for the week, important events or notes for the week. And then you have your dailies with places for you to write your activities for the day, your daily task list, your schedule for the day, and then also a place for daily notes. And so you have Monday Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so Sunday always ends on the right hand side. And then when you flip the page, the weekly compass is on the left again, and so on. So that is how their weekly spread is set up. Because I don't generally work the weekends, I decided that I was going to use Saturday and Sunday for notes. So what I have done, I did this for just the first two weeks, just so you guys could kind of see it. But what I have done is I have taken a washi tape that coordinates with the month or makes me feel the vibes of that month. And I covered up the spot that says Saturday and Sunday and has all of this writing and the calendars and the dates. I covered that up with a piece of washi and then I can just use this entire page for notes. I'll just ignore the timeline and all the little boxes and things and I'll use these for additional note pages during the month. And then I took the same washi that was there and I stuck a tiny piece here that covers up this little section right here. I did this so that this easily tells me that it's a new week. This allows me to have a color that I'll use for any sort of highlighting or time blocking that I need for the week, but it also allows me to easily tell when one week has ended and a new week has started because the washi will change. It's the only decor I plan on having on my weekly compass and my daily pages is this tiny piece of washi at the beginning of each week and then that same washi on the Saturday and Sunday, and then whatever color of Tombow or mild liner or dot marker or whatever that I use for time blocking or making to-do lists or highlighting important things. So, so Monday the first is a holiday, so I just hand lettered holiday in a color that kind of matched the color of that washi. So that is the first week. When we go into the second week, I have a new washi, and it goes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday and Sunday are covered with that washi. So this is a really good way for me to tell when I've moved from one week to the next week and just kind of differentiate weeks. It's also a really good way to use up my washi stash. And so I thought that was also a nice benefit of it. And it gives me a base to pick a highlighter color. So whatever color I use that week besides my black pen, just be one color that coordinates with that washi. 
So that's how I have the weekly set up. Like I said, this is a very functional planner. So this will have like important notes for the week. So say my boss is traveling. I can put a note to myself that my boss is traveling. Or say we have a really big deadline that week. I'll put notes there. This section right here will probably be for things that I know I need to do that week that aren't really like work things, more like admin and boss type things. And then this will be for my weekly tasks for the week of the things that I want to get done that week. And then this is my daily page. I will time block each day just so that I have a visual of when I have meetings, when I have time to work on my own work, things like that. This will be for notes. This will be my tasks for that specific day. I really do like this layout. This isn't like my perfect work planner because there's still a lot going on in this work planner. Even if you take off the washi, which I don't think actually, um, which I don't think actually makes it look busy. I think it actually makes it look less busy. But on a week where you don't have the washi, like with the pinkish red color and all of the words and all of the division, it's kind of still a lot on the page and a lot of structure. Ideally, I would like something probably just a little bit more simple. So a timeline and then just the rest of this page to be grid. And then this without any shading. I'm not really a big fan of shading in my planners. I find it distracting. I'd probably prefer this to be without shading and I may prefer this to be slightly different. I think I might rather if it had something similar to like a Hobonichi Weeks or something, but like skinnier and then like a giant to-do list section, something like that. But I think this is very usable for work and I think it's very functional for work and I think I'm going to like it. Like I said, it's not like absolute perfect what I would envision or dream about in my work planner, but it's pretty darn close and I think it's a good like starting off point on what I would want in a work planner that just had monthly pages and a weekly overview and daily pages. So there's no weekly spread. This is really a daily planner. It just has this sort of weekly overview page just that you have a landing page for each week. And I do like that. The only thing I've done to the daily pages is add a little bit of washi in the first two weeks of January and written holiday and added tabs. I haven't done anything else. And then in the very back, they do have some lined pages for notes. It's, I don't know, like four pages. So those will just be pages that I use for reference for things that relate just to this year. And then I do have a reference binder for things that are like ongoing and common placing for work and all of that. But that is my work planner setup. I'm really excited about it and it's pretty much done. I just need that vinyl cover and that's just aesthetics. I need to stick down all of the holiday stickers, which I will do at work. And then I need to migrate things and fill it out and that's it. But that is my work planner setup. That's how I'm gonna be using the Franklin Planner Organizer, which is a daily planner in A5 size. It does come in B6 size as well. I did get this on Amazon Japan and I do have a video on it, so I'll link that up above. And that is my project planner, which is in a Sterling Inc. monthly booklet. I also have a video on these, so we'll also link that in the cards up above as well. And I will put links to the shops where I got my tabs down in the description box in case you wanted to shop for some tabs as well. If you have any questions or comments about my work planner setup, please don't hesitate to put them down below and I will definitely get back with you. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the share of my work planner setup for 2024. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos and don't forget to just scribble.